Hi, I'm Faye Sherlock. I'm the Sustainable Communities Project Officer at Chester Zoo. And a lot of you will heard, have heard about Chester Zoo um, and the work that we do. And I just want to start by saying um, and remind you that we're actually a conservation and education charity. And our mission is preventing extinction. Um, and not only do we do this through the amazing work that we do on site, and some of you might not know that we actually have projects across the whole globe. So this is where sustainable palm oil fits in. I quite often get, you're a sustainable communities project officer at, at Chester Zoo, and my role is mostly working with businesses to make sure where they use palm oil that it's sustainable. And it's just, um, yeah, starting off by showing you that picture of how that fits with what we do on site at the zoo. One of our projects is out in Borneo. It's based um, in the Kinabatangan region of Malaysia and Borneo, and it's the very heart of our sustainable palm oil campaign. We've worked with a brilliant project partner out there um, called Hutan um, for a number of years um, on a variety of different projects, uh, reforestation work, monitoring work, nest boxes, orangutan rope bridges. Um, and yes, all this work is absolutely brilliant and really vital, but what we found was actually there's, a, there's another really vital link um, which we can make a real difference on. The biggest threat to orangutans in this area is habitat fragmentation. And this is due to oil palm plantations. And actually, we're all palm oil buyers here in the UK. So not only can we help with the projects out there in Borneo, actually, we're buyers. So can we influence the industry as buyers, as individuals, as um, a zoo ourselves, we're buyers, and the businesses and the network that we surround ourselves with. It's an, it's an absolutely stunning area. It's filled with the most amazing species. The biodiversity there is, is absolutely brilliant. All, all of these species are impacted by this and, and a species that we work with. And you may have seen a, a picture like this before. So this is what an oil palm plantation looks like. So like I mentioned, the habitat is fragmented. Um, so you'll have areas of this amazing rainforest. Um, it's, it's secondary rainforest in this area, which is a bit of hope when you see all the destruction and, and deforestation that's happened out there. Actually, in the Kinabatangan region, this is secondary rainforest. If we went out there, you, you would think it was primary rainforest, but it was logged around 40 or 50 years ago. It's been reforested and the species have moved back. So we try and think of that as a positive. The species are still there. We just need to try and halt the deforestation and start reforesting. Um, and then, yeah. We can, we can um, hopefully do similar in, in these regions that we work in. I want just to start by breaking down what palm oil actually is. So it's, it's a fruit on an oil palm tree and why it's used. Um, and really what I absolutely want you to go away with is understanding why we support sustainable palm oil and not palm oil free. So palm oil is used in products because, first of all, it's really versatile. It can be used in a huge variety of products. It's in about 50% of packaged goods in supermarkets. So it's in a huge amount of products. Um, and that is because of a number of reasons. First of all, it's got a really high melting point. So it can be used as a solid or a liquid. So when you're looking at it as an ingredient in a product, it's really, really versatile. So it can be used in things like bread, lipsticks, ice cream, chocolate, cleaning products, you name it, there's a huge amount of um, products that it's in. It also um, prolongs shelf life of products. So if you think of a loaf of bread, of course, we've got a really big problem with um, food waste. So if you can put palm oil in it and actually that improves the shelf life, that's a real positive when we're talking about food waste. And it also um, has a really smooth, creamy texture and an absence of smell and taste. If you think about other oils, like for example, coconut oil, obviously that has a really strong smell and sense of taste. That's going to alter the nature of the pro product. And it's the most efficient oil. This is the key. So when you're having a look, when you've got a piece of land, this is how much you oil that you can get in comparison to other oils. So there is no other oil which produces the same amount in that piece of land. And these are the comparisons. So when you're talking palm oil free and switching to different oil, we need vegetable oils. They're really, really important in products. There's a reason that they're in, you know, there's a reason palm oil is in 50% of products. It's needed. When you're thinking, right, let's swap to coconut, let's swap to some of these other oils, olive, rapeseed, sunflower, soybean, you're then talking more land. You're talking destruction elsewhere. And 
shifting the problem elsewhere, which is what we absolutely don't want. What we want to do, and we don't want to ship, ship people from these oils to Palm. What we want to do is push towards sustainability across all products and across all um, high risk deforestation commodities and set that standard for all of them. But it's just really, this shows really clearly actually why palm oil free isn't the solution. Um, it really would be a disaster if everyone swapped from oil palm to a different vegetable oil. There are a number of other reasons. So not only is there no other suitable alternative to palm oil, also it's a really, really great um, part of the economy in these developing countries, so Indonesia and Malaysia particularly, and we don't want to take that away from them. It's really great. It's made up of, palm oil is made up of a huge amount of smallholder farmers, really great way of them um, having income. And actually, if they've, if they've got this oil palm plantation, they're growing palm oil, what is the incentive for them if we go palm oil free? Are they then going to think, right, I'll, I'll reforest this piece of land. No, they're not. They're going to grow something else where the demand is. So actually, it's about working with these growers that have already got plantations and how can we improve them and make them better. So we don't want to take that away from these developing countries. It's brilliant. Um, it's brilliant for their economy. And also, actually, as the UK and even at European level, we are not big buyers of palm oil at all. The biggest buyers are Indonesia themselves, uh, India uh, and China. And they're not calling for sustainable palm oil and certainly not to the level that we would expect it to be. So we've now got to think, actually, as the UK, we have a really powerful voice. We're listened to at a global level, respected. Um, so actually, it's about using that voice and actually demanding what we expect from this industry and influencing it with that. And um, yeah, finally, I just wanted to talk, break down a bit about what sustainable palm oil actually is. This is another common question I get you know, there's a lot of confusion around it. So we support the RSPO, that's the certification scheme for palm oil. And in that certification scheme, really celebrated 2018, um, it came out no deforestation. There's also no fires. Of course, that's, you know, really horrendous way of clearing the land is having forest fires, no planting on peatland. Increasingly, we're hearing more about how vital peatland is in terms of when you're talking about uh, climate change and wildlife corridors, you know, another really, really vital um, thing that needs introducing in these massive oil palm plantations. Like I mentioned, it, it comes back to that habitat fragmentation. We've got these areas of rainforest and it's about linking them back together so that the species can move in between these areas of land. And there's also the human rights side of it is really vital. Of course, we're a wildlife um, and conservation charity, but absolutely um, there's a lot of human rights elements to this as well. So no child labour, um, fair pay, improved working conditions and things like that. So where do we fit in as a zoo? So like I mentioned, we work with our brilliant project partners out in Borneo, Hutan. Um, and it's amazing to see kind of how this, this shows a really clear journey of how this project has evolved. Um, as a zoo, first and foremost, we looked at how we could do this internally and make sure particularly with our food products, this, this, was, this has been achievable, um, how we could put that policy in, in place ourselves and look through our own supply chain and work with our own suppliers and learn from this. Um, we work with our sector. Um, it's, zoos are a really interesting one because we're buyers, we're a visitor attraction, but we also have the link with the animals. So when people come on site, they're seeing species that they would never normally come across. And it just becomes that bit of a link when you're eating a chocolate bar and then you're seeing orangutans, it's that link and breaking down that link. We work with a huge amount of industry and corporates. Like I mentioned, my role um, is Sustainable Communities Project Officer, so I'll speak a bit more in detail about um, how that works. But not only on our communities project at a high level, we work with a huge amount of industry and corporates to um, support them in their palm oil journey um, and um, yeah, passionately promote sustainable palm oil and try and empower more companies to be talking about it because, unfortunately, there's a lot of nervousness around talking about palm oil, as I can, I'm sure you can imagine with um, the press that it gets, the really bad press that it gets. Um, companies feel nervous about talking about it, even though they're doing the responsible thing. So it's about using us as a trusted voice in this. Um, and, you know, we've got the fact we're armed with the science and it's about supporting these businesses to, be, to go out there and be brave and talk about it. We do an, a huge amount of work with schools, amazing work um, in terms of going out into schools in our local community um, on this campaign. 
Um, yeah, so I, I'm, I'm here today to talk to you particularly about our communities um, project, which started in Chester. We trialled it um, in Chester, working mostly with the hospitality industry. Uh, when we had a look, like I mentioned, we had a look to see actually we're buyers, how can we influence our network um, with palm oil and get not just individuals. As we all know, like it's really difficult nowadays. There's so much pressure on us as individuals to make sure we're plastic free, we use sustainable palm oil. You know, there's so much pressure. So actually, we wanted to go a step higher. We've got those tools for individuals. Um, really excitingly, there's an app coming out soon where you can scan products. So definitely have a look uh, for that where you can see how sustainable products are. Um, but it was about having a little look, a look a bit higher than that. And of course, we also work top level, government level down as well. But this project is specifically that kind of middle level. And my colleague Kat sits on a lot of, um, she's pictured here, she was featured on, um, she'll hate me for this, she was featured on the Earthshot Prize repairing our planet documentary, which was Prince William's documentary, um, Autumn Time last year, which David Attenborough uh, presented. And actually it specifically spoke about our project, David Attenborough um, mentioned it as a, you know, a brilliant solution of how we can work together and how industry here in the UK and businesses here in the UK can influence these real problems out in the field. So we worked with over 50 businesses in Chester to overhaul their food supply chain and make sure that where there's palm oil that's sustainable. We particularly focused on the hospitality industry. When we were having a look at who sits on those round tables and who's demanding sustainable palm oil, we found that retail and manufacturers, this is something that's been on their agenda for a little while, but actually hospitality was really missing from that. So this campaign particularly focuses, uh, focuses on that sector um, because um, if they're not asking their suppliers for it, there isn't that demand there. So that means there's a whole um, segment of suppliers which aren't being asked for it. We not only focus on, we wanted it to have that community feel, so we not only focused on hospitality, it did also include, um, it included things like workplaces. We've got a huge business park in Chester with offices with like 500 staff, and you wouldn't really think, oh, you know, we have a part in this, but actually you've got maybe a canteen, you buy biscuits for meetings, you've also got these say 500 staff that are all engaged that you can educate on this because actually education is such an important part of it um, we also got the hospitals the local council um, manufacturers retailers visitor attractions you know your local brio all of these organizations are buying food products so if you're a buyer you've got suppliers that you can speak to and empower to do the right thing um, and actually one of one of our kind of most celebrated um, champions Ed Central, they supply all the council schools in the area so it's like four or five million school meals a year they got on board with the project it linked really nicely with our education work and writing um, writing to schools and encouraging them to write to suppliers and it's all about that communication and demand and Ed Central came on board as a champion and actually went through RSPO certification themselves to make sure that they're compl using completely sustainable palm oil so a massive win and shows what um, a community project really can achieve. Um, and yeah, it was brilliant. Over 50 businesses engaged in the project um, and we still have that very much running in Chester, but we didn't want to stop there. We then created a framework and a project kind of model around what we achieved in Chester and said, well, actually, this could be applied to any community, not even just in the UK, but actually globally, because it's essentially empowering businesses in your area to be more sustainable. And there's so much pressure on businesses to be sustainable. And we've got a toolkit with letters to write to your suppliers, step by step, with a written policy. We've got it all there for them, for them to pick up and get on with, really breaking down what can feel like a really complex thing to do, breaking it down and making it really simple. We now are running in seven, seven different areas, which is really, really exciting. Um, and there's more and more launching all the time. Um, and we're currently working with a restaurant supply chain. I'm not allowed to tell you who today, but we're hoping to announce them soon, who are going to be rolling out in cities that they work in. And it, really exciting time for the project and the businesses that work in these areas can obviously all get involved and all become champions um, of the project. I just wanted to um, finish by just giving you some inspiration on what you could do and what you can do to really help this because actually we can all be part of part of this uh, problem and it really is about working together on this and creating demand and shifting the conversation away from palm oil free and to sustainable palm oil and to really um, encourage that industry to be better and to show that there is a demand for sustainable palm oil and that we support it. We just expect it to be, this is how we expect it to be. 
Um, we work with some fantastic partners which support our work here at the zoo, and it's very much a partnership. Uh, we work with Ferrero, so they work with our community work and our education work. We work with Co-op with some of our field projects and also Saputo again with some of our education and field work. Um, so there's a huge amount that, that we can do, and whether it's getting involved um, as your business in one of these areas that I've mentioned, taking it on so anyone can take on the community's project we've got a little school running in Mokhtra um, we've got a lady um, running it with Smarch and Orangutan Society um, down in Oxford anybody can kind of take on this project and lead it as a community-based project so why not why not lead it but if you if you're not um, if you're not wanting to lead it just be part of it in your area or encourage other businesses to be um, speak to your business, say, do we use sustainable palm oil? Start asking those questions, educate your network, spread the word um, about, about this issue because there really is a lot of confusion around there. Um, and a really useful tool which we use when talking about that is our joint statement on our website. Um, so we have a statement from over 100 conservation organisations. Like I mentioned, David Attenborough supports sustainable palm oil, but there's also over 100 other organisations, WWF, um, a lot of um, orangutan charities that all support sustainable and say that this is the right this is the right route to take um, so yeah hopefully you're inspired um, to, to make some changes today and it's about going away and talking to brands and these brands that are brave enough to talk about sustainable palm oil congratulate them and thank them for putting that time and effort into making sure that they're responsibly sourcing thank you Thank you ever so much. Um, I feel like Katie and Catherine are already going to be concerned by how inspired I might have been by that and that somehow being added onto our Australian leading the way um, in some of this because it is you say it's so important and it's really rare that you hear responsible palm oil as opposed to no palm oil yeah. um, for companies individuals who've, who've heard that call to action they want to go away um, and get involved is your website the best place to start you mentioned an app do we know when that's likely to launch yeah so hopefully the app's going to launch in the next couple of months and that'll be aimed at um, when you go out to a supermarket um, and scanning products in the supermarket as an individual and just being a bit more aware on in terms of your shopping list but as a business yeah get in touch get in touch with us so um, I can pass on my details head to our website and get in touch and we can see how um, you could best fit into this campaign fantastic we'll obviously be going there in person just for any excuse to have another trip to the zoo um